making a Stuart model steam plant, part 38. Assembling the boiler frame, testing how effective the heat insulation material is and marking out the steel boiler base for drilling. And here's the story so far, the boiler's beginning to look a bit more shiny. The next part of the job is to fasten the mounting base together to support the boiler. I did think about using these brass hexagon bolts but decided against it. No sooner had I fixed the boiler together using these bolts and this nut spinner, I took it apart again. Stuart 504 boilers traditionally have used 4B8 brass round-headed single-slotted bolts or machine screws if you prefer that for the definition. Either way, I don't think these hexagon bolts look right for this application. Assembly is very straightforward. After cleaning up the castings, you slide the rear casting support in place, then bolt on one of the side plates, after which you turn the boiler around like you can see in this clip and bolt on the second side plate. On these new Stuart boilers, there's a bit of a cutout, which means that you can only fit the side plates one way around. Bear in mind that between the side plates and the cast iron supports, is going to be some heat insulation and these steel side plates are not designed to be bolted tightly up to the cast iron supports so in doing a test fit like this do not tighten the brass bolts. As you can see quite clearly now there are differences between the new revision of the Stuart 504 boiler and the old ones. The boiler barrel doesn't want to slide in all the way up to the chimney support and it would appear to me that knocking the corners off each of the side plates isn't really necessary because when the heat insulation is fitted both of the side plates do not foul the rounded part of the cast iron at the chimney end. Originally I did use the brass hexagon bolts to hold the side plates in place and here I'm removing them to replace them with the round headed bolts. A viewer once told me off for screwing bolts in without having the screwdriver right in the centre of the bolt so just for this viewer, I'm really trying to make sure that the screwdriver remains in the centre. But oh dear, it's the end of civilization. It's sliding to the side. Trying to take life slightly seriously just for a moment, I'd like to mention that it is important to make sure the screwdriver is in the centre when you're screwing in brass bolts. And now for something completely different. And you can relax, it's not asbestos. This is modern heat resistant material. There are two types here. There's the wool type and then the board type. Well, they're not really boards, they're just thin sheets. And this is the sort of stuff that I would use on a locomotive boiler. This is a small and rather excellent Proxon blowtorch. And with the help of some really high tech test equipment, that is my hand, I'm going to try and find out how good a barrier this stuff is against heat. The blowtorch is very hot and my hand now hurts. And while my hand is in the sensitive state, I'm supporting one of the pieces of heat resistant material. And now I'm applying a lot of heat to the area that my hand is just behind. And the good news is I'm not feeling any pain. Let's try some of the wool stuff. This is a good bit thicker. You will notice that the blowtorch is not burning this material. And I cannot feel any heat at all on my hand. I did this for quite a while to see whether the material started to glow red, and it didn't. When I took the blow lamp away, the front side didn't retain much heat. If I was to use this other stuff in the thin sheets, I would have to use two sheets. And here's the acid test. Once again with my hand underneath both of the sheets, I'm applying a lot of heat. You can see that the material is glowing red, but I can't feel any heat on my hand. This is quite encouraging. I think I would rather use these sheets because they're more rigid than the floppy wool type stuff. Time for a real practical test. This is my hand, still not looking very burnt, and this is a small stick of silver solder on top of the heat insulation material. What I'm going to do with this blowtorch to demonstrate just how hot it is, is melt the silver solder on my hand with these sheets in between. And if you want some technical information, this is Silver Flow 55 Silver Solder and it melts easily with the blowtorch at a very high temperature. Moving on from attempting to burn my hand, I'm going to mark the position for the boiler on the steel plate base. This clip shows the marking out blue fluid just sat there drying. After the marking out blue was dry, I placed the boiler on top of it. The next part of the job was simple. 
I used the right angled end of my scriber to mark through the holes down onto the marking out blue. Now I know where to drill the holes to mount the boiler onto the steel plate. This steel plate will also support the gas burner and an internal heat shield. I'll show you that in a future episode very shortly. I've temporarily placed the gas burner in its approximate position and that's it from me. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.